Welcome back to Sabermetrics 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on batting average. If you're watching this series, you're probably a baseball fan, and if you're a baseball fan, you probably already know what batting average is, which then might lead you to question me why on earth are we learning about this sort of basic thing at all? Well, the reason is because sabermetrics came about because these basic statistics don't actually do the things that you would hope that they would do. So in order to motivate those statistics that we normally think of or we normally associate with sabermetrics, I first need to introduce these basic statistics, not to explain what they are to you, but rather to explain why they're not so hot after all. So we're going to be sprinkling in these basic lectures throughout this course, starting today with batting average. What is batting average? Well, you take the number of hits and you divide it by the number of at-bats a player has, and there you go, you have an average. It's a number between 0 and 1, essentially a percentage, which we normally refer to as a decimal instead of a percentage for whatever reason. I guess it's tradition. And we know that these sorts of numbers range usually somewhere between 200 and 300, or the low 300s, with a 300 being excellent and somewhere around 230 being bad, and if you get below 200, you're an abysmal player. So that's batting average. Average, you all know how to calculate it. It's very simple. Why do we use batting average? Well, I don't really have a very good answer for that question. I can give you three kind of motivations. One, it's very easy to calculate. If you're a second grader and you know how to do division, congratulations, you can calculate a batting average. So I think that there's some sort of simplicity there that everyone likes, and that's why batting average has stuck around so long. Uh, also, it's a well-understood measure. So if we were to remove batting average from the world tomorrow, well, every Everyone knows what batting average is. Even a casual baseball fan knows what a batting average is. Even the spouse of a casual baseball fan probably knows what batting average is. So we'd be erasing something that people deem important for whatever reason. And there's also a strong degree of path dependency here. Batting averages exist in cricket. Cricket predates baseball. And that guy that you see on your screen, Henry Chadwick, was a, stati a statistician who dabbled in both cricket and early baseball. So he adopted this concept of batting average from cricket and applied it to baseball. And well, we've just stuck with it for more than 100 years since then. And it will probably never have it go away because that is the number one statistic that gets reported in newspapers. And it's one of the important uh, statistics for the Triple Crown, right? It's the, the leading statistic in the Triple Crown race. It's the one that always gets the top billing over home runs and RBIs. So there you go. That's basically why we have batting average, despite the fact that there are three serious flaws with it. Number one, batting average does not speak to a player's power. I'm going to be illustrating these weaknesses with extremes. I apologize if it seems, well, overly extreme, but I think it's easier to illustrate problems with certain statistics when you take the extreme case. So think about a player with 150 singles and 600 at-bats. That would give him a batting average of 250, which isn't very great. He would be like a below average-ish player if we were just looking at batting average. Of course, 150 singles over 600 at-bats with nothing else isn't very good. But if we were just looking at batting average, that would be like an okay-ish batting average. In contrast, you could take a player with 150 home runs and 600 at-bats. Again, that player has a 250 batting average. So in terms of batting average, these players look identical, and yet that 150 singles player isn't such a great player, whereas that 150 home runs player is probably the best player to ever live. So batting average completely ignores power, and that's a big problem because we don't actually care about how well a guy can hit and how frequently he'll get on base. What we ultimately care about in baseball is runs scored, and singles are not as good at producing runs as home runs are. So if we're caring about producing runs, which we should be because that's what wins games, we should be looking less at singles and more at home runs. We should be weighing those two things differently, and batting average does not do that. The second problem is that this batting average concept does not incorporate walks. So think about a player with 200 singles and 600 at-bats. Well, that gives him a, a .3333, essentially one-third batting average. And that is a very good batting average, but you can compare that to a player with zero hits in a season in a single at-bat with 599 walks, and that guy at the bottom is the best baseball player to ever live, despite the fact that he has no hits in a season and his batting average is a zero as a result. Walks are important, walks get you on base, batting average does not account for that.
The last problem is a little bit more subtle, and it's something that we'll be delving into with a future statistic known as BABIT, batting average on balls in play, and that problem is an element of randomness. Sometimes balls find open spots. You hit a ball, if you're not driving it way far out of the ballpark, hitting it 500 feet, you're going to have a problem in that sometimes the ball is going to find a hole in play, and sometimes it's going to be hit straight at a ball player straight as a defender. And so you can't differentiate from a batting average which balls just happened to sneak through an infield and which balls were hit directly, say, at an infielder and were caught. And as a result, batting average varies a lot from year to year, and that's a problem because if we care about statistics in terms of predicting the future, well, batting average is not going to help us very much with that, or at least not as much compared to some other statistics. All right, that's batting average for you. Join me next time when we cover another statistic. Take care.